Hello, fellow mathematicians. Welcome back. Boy, do I have exciting news. I think that this is our last calculus lesson of the year. Woohoo! Then we'll get to do some review and have the final, and it's going to be great. So, to celebrate, I'm going to start with a magic trick for you. Are you ready? So, no notes yet. We'll get to notes in a minute, but I want to show you this magic trick. It's a calculus magic trick. So, here we go. Okay, starts out a little boring maybe, but just wait for the excitement. First of all, I'm going to evaluate this limit just the regular way. First thing I want to do is try direct substitution and see what happens. So if I substitute 2 into the numerator, let's see, 2 squared minus 5 times 2 plus 6, that would be 0 over 2 minus 2, 0. Oh, remember that? When that happens, we call it indeterminate. And that means that we don't have the answer yet, but maybe there's another way to find it. And so one of those methods that we used was to factor the top and the bottom, or factor whatever can factor, I guess, not the bottom this time. We can factor the top into x minus 2 times x minus 3, and then we can cancel with the x minus 2 on the bottom. And then let's try it again. Let's try direct substitution again, and what would we get? We would get 2 minus 3 which is negative 1. So this limit is negative 1. Okay, well here comes the magic trick. Are you ready? I am going to evaluate the limit, not of this function, but of the derivative of the top and the derivative of the bottom. So what's the derivative of the top? That would be 2x minus 5. And what's the derivative of the bottom? That would be 1. Now I'm going to evaluate that limit, so I need to plug in the 2. 2 times 2 minus 5, that is 4 minus 5, and that is negative 1. <gasps> I got the same answer. Ooh, let's try that trick again. Okay, now, remember this one? There was a day when we learned some special trigonometric limits, and we learned that the limit of sine of x over x as x goes to 0 is 1. We didn't do that algebraically. There's kind of a, a geometric proof to it. I think we did it graphically, actually, and tabularly, and then we used it to do all kinds of other problems. But basically, the point is, this was one that we memorized way back when. <clears throat> now, I'm going to do my magic trick. Okay, instead of taking this limit, I'm going to take the limit of the derivative of the top, so that would be cosine x, over the derivative of the bottom, that would be 1. Now, what is cosine 0? Cosine 0... <clears throat> that is 1. So this is 1 over 1. The answer is 1. Ooh, same answer again. Woohoo, I like this magic trick. Let's try it one more time. Oh, okay, doing this one algebraically. Do you remember what we did? So first of all, of course, we want to uh, plug in the 3 and see what happens. Square root of 3 plus 1 would be square root 4. Oh, square root 4 is 2. 2 minus 2 is 0. 3 minus 3 is 0. Okay, this one is also indeterminate, 0 over 0, so we need another algebraic technique. So what we're going to do <clears throat> is use the conjugate of the numerator, and so that's going to be the square root of x plus 1 plus 2 over itself. It's been a while since we've done this kind of problem, but we're going to have to brush up on it again because the final exam is coming. Okay, so now what happens when we multiply those conjugates in the numerator? So let's see, square root x plus 1 times square root x plus 1, that gives us x plus 1. Insides and outsides cancel, that's the beauty of conjugates. And then for the last, we get minus 2 times 2, so we get minus 4. And let's just leave the denominator as it is for the time being. Let's simplify the numerator some more x plus 1 minus 4 is x minus 3. Well, would you look at that? We have an x minus 3 on the bottom. Remember doing this, you guys, a long, long time ago? So what we're going to do is we're going to cancel the x minus 3 from the top and the bottom, and then leave a 1 for the numerator, and then let's go ahead and try plugging in the 3 again. So we have 1 over the square root of 4 plus 2, and that would be 1 over 2 plus 2, so the answer is 1 fourth. Okay, time for the magic trick. So remember what I did for the magic trick in the previous two? I took the limit of not the function itself, but the derivative of the top and the derivative of the bottom. So let's see, remember we can write x plus 1, um, we can write the square root of x plus 1 
as x plus 1 to the 1 half power. So let's think of that. Okay, so the derivative of that would be 1 half times x plus 1 to the negative 1 half power. Derivative of negative 2 is just 0, and then the derivative of the bottom would be 1. Now let's see what happens if I plug in 3. So I have 1 half times 3 plus 1 to the negative 1 half. And that would be 1 half times 4 to the negative 1 half. And that would be 1 half times 1 over 4 to the 1 half. 4 to the 1 half, square root of 4, that's 2. So 1 half times 1 half, 1 fourth. It worked again. Okay, this is pretty cool. But enough of the magic trick. We better get on with our calculus. Guess what? No, it's number 35. Magic trick. No. Okay, time to spoil it. It's not really a magic trick. It is a rule, a new kind of procedure. It's called L'Hopital's rule. That's the French for the hospital. L'Hopital. Notes number 35. Okay, <clears throat> we have this handsome gentleman named Guillaume de L'Hopital. And he was from Paris, France. 1661 was when he was born. And he figured out that if you're evaluating a limit and you get 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity or negative infinity over negative infinity, actually it could be even over positive infinity, then you will get the same answer if you find the derivative of the top and the derivative of the bottom and evaluate that limit. And that is what we're going to call L'Hopital's rule. And sometimes you're going to see it written as La Hospital. La Hospital. Oops, I'm going to put my S in there. So, for example, when you do your myopen math, it might not say L'Hopital. It might say La Hospital. Okay? So, let's write that down. It goes like this. If the limit as x goes to a of f of x over g of x equals 0 over 0 or plus or minus infinity over infinity, then the limit as x approaches a of f of x over g of x is equal to the limit as x approaches a of f prime of x over g prime of x. That is L'Hopital's rule. And I apologize, but I am not going to prove it. It's probably going to take the rest of the video just to do the examples, and we're not going to be able to experience the proof. But if you're interested, maybe you can find it out there somewhere on the internet for your viewing pleasure. A couple things I want to point out about this. It says x goes to a, that could be x goes to 0, that could be x goes to infinity, that could be x goes to 72. It doesn't matter, it can be anything. And another very important thing I want to point out is that we are not using the quotient rule. The quotient rule is not derivative of the top, derivative of the bottom, right? This is just something else. It's not the quotient rule. Okay, we're going to practice. I think we have about seven problems to do. And for some problems, we won't be able to use L'Hopital's rule because it won't fit with these requirements. Or we won't have to use L'Hopital's rule. But for other problems, we can. And perhaps it will make things a little bit easier in some cases. The thing I think is cool about this is it's tying together a couple of the main ideas from this entire year. It ties together the idea of evaluating a limit with finding derivatives. All right, let's move on and take a look at number one. Use L'Hopital's rule to evaluate the limit or state that it does not apply. Well, we have to figure out first if it applies. How do we know if it applies? If we get 0 over 0 or plus or minus infinity over infinity, then it applies. So let's see. Let's take this problem and substitute in the 2, and we get 2 squared plus 1, so that's 5, over 2 times 2 is 4 plus 1, that's 5. 5 over 5 is 1. 5 over 5 is not 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity, so L'Hopital's rule does not apply. All we would have to do to evaluate this limit is just plug in the number 2 and we would get 1. 
Let's take a look at number two. The limit as x approaches infinity of x over e to the x. Okay, well let's plug in infinity and see what we get. Infinity over e to the infinity. e to the infinity would also be infinity, so infinity over infinity. So L'Hopital's rule does apply, so let's use it. Whenever I use L'Hopital's rule, what I like to do is make a little symbol, LH, that tells me, or tells you, or whoever's looking, that I am using L'Hopital's rule. So this is now going to be the limit as x goes to infinity of the derivative of the top, 1, over the derivative of the bottom, e to the x. Once we have applied L'Hopital's rule, we try to evaluate the limit again by plugging in the number and seeing what happens. So what happens now if we plug in infinity? What's 1 over e to the infinity? If e to the infinity is infinity, then we have 1 over infinity, and that's pretty close to 0, so this limit is 0. Number 3. Use L'Hopital's rule or state that it does not apply. Okay, so let's see what we get if we plug in 0. 0 cubed is 0 over sine of 0 is 0 and x is also 0. So we do have 0 over 0. So L'Hopital's rule does apply. So let's use it. So now we're evaluating the limit as x goes to 0 of the derivative of the top, 3x squared, over the derivative of the bottom. The derivative of sine x would be cosine x, and the derivative of x would be 1. Okay, so now that we've applied L'Hopital's rule, let's try to evaluate this limit. So we plug 0 in the top and we get 0. We plug 0 in the bottom. Cosine of 0 is 1. Uh-oh, we're getting 1 minus 1. We're getting 0 over 0 again. What do we do now? We do it again. We do L'Hopital's rule again. So we have the limit as x goes to 0 of the derivative of the top would be 6x over the derivative of the bottom would be negative sine x. Okay. Now let's try to evaluate the limit. Let's plug in the 0. 6 times 0 is 0 over the sine of 0 is 0. Uh-oh. Here we go again. 0 over 0 again. Okay. Don't give up hope. Let's do it again. L'Hopital's rule. The limit as x goes to 0 Uh, the derivative of the top would be 6, and the derivative of the bottom would be negative cosine x. Okay, now let's evaluate it. Plugging in the 0, we get 6 over, hey, if it's not a 0, that's good. Cosine of 0 is 1, 6 over negative 1. So the answer is negative 6. We got there. Yay! Okay. Number 4. Let's see if L'Hopital's rule applies. So I'll plug infinity in. 9 times infinity plus 4 is infinity. 3 minus 2 times infinity would be negative infinity. If we get negative infinity over infinity, then we can use L'Hopital's rule. So let's do it. So we have the limit as x approaches infinity of the derivative of the top, 9, over the derivative of the bottom, negative 2. Okay, cool. We can do that. Negative 9 halves. That's the answer. How are we doing so far? Can we make it through three more? Here's number five. All right, let's figure out if L'Hopital's rule applies to this problem. So we're going to substitute a four in there. Four cubed minus 64 is zero. And four squared, 16 plus 16, 32. All right, this one is just zero over 32. Direct substitution is all we need here. Zero over 32 is zero. No need for L'Hopital's rule. In fact, it does not even apply. Okay, number six. Let's see here. Let's try plugging in the zero and see what we get. So sine of two times zero. Sine of zero is zero. Sine of seven times zero. Again, sine of zero is zero. Zero over zero. So L'Hopital's rule does apply. Let's use it. And let's find the derivative of the top. That would be, use a chain rule now, derivative of outside would be cosine. So if cosine of 2x times the derivative of the inside would be 2. 
Same thing on the bottom, derivative of the outside, so cosine of 7x times derivative of the inside, 7. Now let's find this limit by plugging in 0. So cosine of 2 times 0, that's cosine of 0, that's going to be 1. So we have 1 times 2 over, on the bottom, cosine of 0 again is 1, 1 times 7. So we get 2 sevenths. Okay, and one more. Let's see if L'Hopital's rule applies to this problem. Plug 0 in the top, we get 0. Plug 0 in the bottom, what's e to the 0? That's actually 1. So this is 0 over 1. So L'Hopital's rule does not apply. Okie dokie. I just want to point out here that 0 over 0 and infinity over infinity are not the only indeterminate forms that exist out there in the calculus and math world. Here are some other indeterminate forms. And if we were doing a more thorough study of using L'Hopital's rule, we would have other kinds of problems that instead of having quotients, have other sorts of situations, and we would be able to work with them, change them, modify them, manipulate them, and eventually use L'Hopital's rule on them. We're not doing that. We're doing the abridged version of this lesson, and don't worry, the abridged version is all you need for your LDCC class and for your LDCC test, so it works perfectly. So we have a My Open Math assignment on L'Hopital's rule, and I think it has seven problems, so that is good enough to be our assignment for today. And then we will celebrate by moving on to doing a whole bunch of review for the final. Thanks, everybody.